as we were singing about um, Jesus dying for us at Calvary, we can't possibly know the sacrifice that he made. Um, he gave up his eternal riches and um, he did that so that we could now join with him in his heavenly riches. So um, as we give today, yeah, I just want to encourage you to put him first in your finances, just as he has done. He has given his all for us and uh, we have a great opportunity um, to regularly give, you know, and to be open-handed towards God. Um, it's a great discipline to have to give regularly. So I just encourage you. I'm just going to pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you so much, Lord, that, um, that you came for us, Lord Jesus, that you pursued us, Father God, to the point of death, Lord God. And we just thank you for everything that you laid down for us, Lord God. And we just thank you for the privilege that it is today, Lord, to give back to you something that you've already given to us, Lord. We choose to put you first, Lord God, in our finances. Help us to be a generous church, a generous giving church, Lord Jesus. May we excel in this area, we pray, Lord Jesus. Bless this giving today. Amen. If you'd just like to stand, the uh, buckets are going to come through. If you can put your connection card and the envelopes in those buckets. Good coffee. What do you reckon? You like the person you're sitting next to. Fantastic. They're very good looking today. I believe God's going to speak to us today and challenge us afresh. I was on Facebook this morning, saw Chris and Kerry in Nepal and Kathmandu, and uh, they're doing really well in their church. They sit on the floor. What do you reckon? How many people are bad for a seat? <laughs> so the Nepal church is doing really well. Zeal, you got your program on through there, not in the car park, I think. Have a great time. Fantastic. Fantastic. See you later. Fantastic. Good looking bunch, aren't they? Future church leaders. <laughs> 
We are believing for uh, part of our building fund is um, we are really cramped in this building. We need God to open up a new door, yeah. new building. Um, I was at a body corporate meeting for this, all of these offices, and one of the guys at the other end, he wants to buy all the buildings and level them all <laughs> and build a high rise. <laughs> That's his, that's his job. And uh, so our kids are cramped, and we're just going to pray for a breakthrough right. in this particular area. And uh, your generosity today is fantastic. And men's breakfast is a Saturday. Hey, right. fantastic. So all sorts of good things happening. Hey, are you ready for the Word of God today? Get your Bibles out. We're going to look at Second Corinthians today. Look, last Sunday was Vision Sunday, and uh, where we shared the uh, message of hope. The uh, concept of hope, and um, today I want to, and I received a lot of positive feedback from last Sunday. Thank you for everyone who came up and, and gave me um, some encouragement, and they were challenged, and uh, I think it was very uh, positive. But last Sunday, part of our vision Sunday, I really didn't answer the why question, as in why do we do this? Why do we have a vision which is outward focused and inviting? I unpacked it, but I didn't explain the reason why um, we'll be doing this for this particular next 12 months. Why should we be um, outward focused and inviting? I think if I was to look at everyone today, everyone would say that they're busy at work. Okay, and... Your, your jobs, everything that you do, you're probably full and you're very busy and you have not a lot of time. Would that be true? Yeah. I'd say that would be true for most of us, if not all of us. And I certainly don't want this message to be another task. That's something we're going to do. I, I don't want that at all. I want us to have a spirit about us as a church of why we exist and a priority, a thought, a vision, okay, is that all right? I, I certainly don't, I'm not here to say to each and every one of you, here's another task for you to do. Because I know everyone is just busy and to build friendships, to be outward focused, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight and we want to be honest in our reaching out to people to be an outward focused church. So it's not about us spoke about last week about always having our vision outward being a focus on people who are not yet saved in the kingdom of God and having a, a, having a message of hope and um, sometimes you know like uh, inviting people to hope can be you know you can lack a bit of confidence in that but I, I want to talk about why should we do this is that okay yeah. is that all right okay so why should we be um, outward focus, why should we be inviting? And I believe one of the big answers is that we have a community here as a church and there's a sense of belonging together. It takes time if you're a brand new person here at Hope or if you've been coming occasionally for a couple of months. It takes time to build friendships, to make this place your, your place of worship, your spiritual home. We have connect groups, and connect groups are specifically to build relationships a lot closer than what happens on a Sunday. And they are so beneficial. I constantly get feedback all the time that their connect group that people are involved with is so valuable for them. Uh, they're able to talk and be real, share and build friendships. So can I encourage you? Connect groups is very valuable, but if you're brand new in a church, it can be very difficult. Now look, we are an international church, and I love that. I want to see more internationals come to our church. But one of the stories of international people is they arrive in this country, they've left family and culture behind, and it is tough. Yeah. Because the Australian culture is a little bit different, and the Australian language is a little bit different. But we all try to understand each other's Portuguese and Spanish and English and Mandarin, and we all try to get through it. But all the more reason why we need to be a family and a community. You understand what I'm saying? And, and one of the things is, if someone comes from overseas, and I notice that the parental visa has just changed to five years, which is, you know, I think the government realises that it's not just having a young couple here. You need your family also. No, I think that's really good. But 
We can't have on there are people in our community who are literally isolated. Yeah. Yeah. This is a strange culture. These Aussies talk funny. They use funny lingo and and, and there are, I would suggest, there's literally hundreds of people just in Vice who in Robina. Who, they've got a full-time job, they work hard, but they miss home, they miss the food, the culture, and they're all by themselves. And I heard a story just this week, a person, full-time work, husband's working, kids are in school, and here's this lady, uh, a highly educated, fantastic job, she's crying. She misses home. And I think we need to be a bit more of a home. Do you understand? Yeah. And that's the reason why we can be... Why do we want to be out of... Because we can provide community. Yeah. More than any other group in this area, we provide a sense of community. Yeah. So that's why we should bother. I read a story recently in western Queensland, just west of Toowoomba, the whole lot of migrants had come into the town to work in the mines, all the men. The problem was that the wives and the children couldn't speak a word of English, and as a result, these wives felt isolated and alone. And I thought of that story, and I thought, we need to be the church of hope. Yeah. We need to be an outward focus because there are people, we can build a relationship. I may not be able to speak Mandarin. I can order Chinese over the phone. I can't speak Mandarin. But we can still be a home and we can still be a community. Right. Yeah. Okay, is that all right? Yes. And, uh, okay. you know, I, I want to suggest to us, why should we bother? Why should we bother? Because when we are outward focused, it requires a bit of sacrifice. It does. It requires a little bit of sacrifice because your vision is slightly different. I remember when... Um, we went to a fam one of my family members for a birthday uh, celebration. We took our girls, our three girls were very young, and we went there, and uh, our girls naturally played with their kids, and they played with all their stuff in their room. And the three girls came home and said, Dad, they've got so much stuff. I've never seen so much technical Electrical. <laughs> they got so many games and stuff and everything. And I remember, I remember this one incident because the reason why was one of my daughters, and it doesn't matter who it is, said to me, "Dad, how come we don't have all that stuff?" And then her next line was, "Are we poor?" <laughs> At that point, I felt really embarrassed. Because my other family member, yes, they are wealthy and they were doing well, and here we are as a pastor. And um, at that point, you know, like, okay, I had I have actually got five degrees, and I could be lecturing at a university and getting a massive wage. But I, Janine and myself, decided to pioneer and pastor a church, and that was a sacrifice we both in camp, knowing, knowing that would cost. Knowing in the first couple of years we paid for the rent of the building that we were hiring, <clears throat> and knowing that there was a sacrifice, and I didn't realise that the sacrifice would touch my children. I felt bad, I felt bad. And uh, they've since changed, and they're now adults, and they see the perspective differently. Um, and we don't regret living a life of sacrifice. Yeah. Because I had to fight a feeling when I when when my daughter asked me that. I had to fight a feeling. And you know what that fight was? And it's a series. You know what that fight was? The fight was to live for me. That was the fight. That I would walk away and I would live for me and not the kingdom of God. Right. That, that's what, why, uh, that went through my mind. Why should I do this when my brother is doing so really well? And I had to fight. I had a vision from God to come here, and yet there was this fight going on inside me. Right. And today, I want to say to you, every one of us, you know, when we compare train drivers in Queensland who get $200,000 and I go, really? <laughs> you better be a good train driver. 
there is a temptation to look towards self. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because to serve God is a sacrifice of some sort, somehow. Because the scripture tells us that every...